First episode, I already got a theme song. Yeah, good stuff. Hey guys, and welcome to the first ever J Plays podcast. Uh, this is something that I've been thinking about trying for a while now. I have no idea what the response is going to be for this, so I just figured I'd give it a shot and see what happens. So the way I think this is going to work is I pick out some video game related news to talk about, and I give my thoughts on it. There might be a segment for talking about other things in general, like maybe movies or TV shows or whatever, just you know, miscellaneous crap like that, and possibly even a Q&A segment at the end of the podcast, if that's something you guys are interested in. So right now I'm just testing the waters. This is one of the ways that I'm experimenting with expanding my channel and like trying to increase my content output. Uh, it's probably going to be a bit shorter than the average podcast, but if enough of you seem interested, I can start making these things longer or, you know, like actually making more than just this one episode. So anyway, enough introduction. Let's get this thing started. Uh, I decided since I'm going to be doing more modern gaming news that I'd better pick something that I'm actually interested in and know a bit about. So this episode is going to mainly focus on the Nintendo Switch. It's going to be released on March 3rd, 2017 uh, worldwide, which is uh, pretty cool because as long as I've known, video game consoles tend to have this like multi-release date depending on which country it's coming from, particularly like North America and Japan. And like even in the past, it was like a big difference. Like I, I think like the NES came like, like a couple years later or something. And then obviously nowadays it wasn't as long as that, but still, you know, there'd be like a week or something between. And I, I never really understood that. So the fact that this is being released worldwide simultaneously is, is really cool. I, I don't know if it's like shipping costs issues or what. But it, I think it's it's about time that that becomes the norm. But yeah, so there's me rambling about the release dates. So the price, $299.99. So $300 in uh, the United States. So I've heard some people complain about this already. They're saying that it's, it's overpriced. I believe uh, Nintendo even lost stock when the price was announced, which is kind of crazy. I don't think it's that bad of a price. The last console that I actually got was the Wii, which is was like pff, like almost 10 years ago exactly, and that was 250. I think the Wii U was around 300 if I remember. And yeah, I guess it, it would have been better if they had a lower price, but I don't think 300 is that bad. And that's coming for me. I'm I'm a cheapskate. I don't like buying games brand new the full retail price or whatever it is, e even for games that I really like. Like, uh, for instance, I waited until Street Fighter V was $20, or, or, or there was some deal going on where I was able to get it for $20, and I was waiting for that game too because I'm a pretty big Street Fighter fan, and that's just I, I just can't bring myself to buy games full price most of the time. But $300 for the, for the Switch, I don't think it's too bad. It could have been better, but it's not awful. But now the... Price in the UK is uh, $279.99, but that's in pounds, so that comes out to about $350 US dollars, which there, I think that's pushing it. That is, yeah, that, that's not good. I don't know what's going on with the UK. I, I think I've heard this before that they tend to have more expensive games for some reason. I don't know why. Maybe Japan is mad at them. No, I'm just kidding. That's too much, definitely. And I feel sorry for the, you know, those of you living out in the UK. I wouldn't blame you if you waited. E even for me, I I'm pretty interested in the Switch, but $300, even then I would wait until the price drops. So console specs. It's got HDMI output, uh, 1080p resolution, a maximum frame rate of 60 FPS. But apparently there's some exceptions because the new Zelda game coming out apparently has a maximum resolution of 900p and a max frame rate of 30 fps now the the whole fps thing i'm not one of those people who are like oh it needs to be 60 fps like a lot of people are and i guess that's an opinion thing i'm sure it is better you know subjectively or objectively well whatever i'm sure it's better in general but it's not something that 
really bugged me, so I don't care too much about that. But I don't really understand this 900p thing. What What is a 900p? Like, I thought it went, you know, 480, 720, 1080. Like, wh where does the 900 come in? I don't really understand that. And even the frame rate, like, why is the frame rate lower than it, what it's capable of? And my only idea is that maybe because uh, this new Zelda game was originally for the Wii U, and now that it's being ported, there's some issues, or I don't know. I don't know anything about that. That's just a hunch. So, uh, okay, moving on. Oh, console portability. So the main thing that... that people are talking about with this new system is that you can take it on the go with you like it's a it's not a handheld console per se it's like a system you plug into your tv play at home it has the power of a home console but you can take it with you wherever you want to go uh so yeah so some people may find this convenient i personally don't care that much about it because i prefer to do most of my gaming at home like on a TV or at someone else's house on a TV. So it's not something that really appeals to me, but I could see why it would appeal to a lot of other people. I've heard things about the power, you know, being not quite what people want. Not, not the power, but the, the, the battery life. Uh, people were hoping that it'd be a bit longer. I think it, it lasts, if you're playing like a more hardcore game, like maybe a few hours or something. Which for me, honestly, wouldn't be that bad because, you know, I'm not going to be playing on the go for that long. But for other people, I guess it, it would be. Now... One thing about this whole handheld thing is it, it kind of worries me a little bit, and I'll tell you why. Part of me thinks that Nintendo is just doing this because they think a portable console will sell better. Because uh, Nintendo has a history of great selling handhelds, like besides the Virtual Boy, which wasn't really a handheld. But yeah, essentially Nintendo has dominated the handheld market since like the Game Boy, leading all the way up to the, th the, to the 3DS. So it makes me wonder if Nintendo is just a bit desperate after the poor sales of the Wii U and they're trying to bank mostly on the fact that their new system is portable. I really hope that this isn't the case because that means that the Switch is relying on this gimmick and it, it can't just live off of being a gimmick. It needs substance. Like we, we saw with the Wii, Nintendo, like I like the Wii, you know, but they really got lucky when, when that thing caught fire and just sold so many copies. And then you saw with the Wii U, it didn't do so well. So the Switch needs to actually be more than just this gimmick of its handheld. And I, I really hope that they pull through with that. So uh, another thing is the controller. The main controller looks a little bulky. I haven't really held one yet, so I can't say anything, but it just, that's how it looks to me. I like the idea of the main controller splitting into two like smaller NES style controllers. Like that's pretty cool. Especially if you're going to be playing those older style games or just any side scroller in general. But the buttons and the joystick look a little close to each other. It might just be me because I have like, big hands, but it, it looks a little cramped. Like if you compare the Wii controller to the Switch, the buttons are obviously much closer than the, what the Wii remote was like. Or at least it seems like it from images I've seen. But like I said, I haven't actually tried it yet, so I can't comment on that too much. It also has motion controls like the Wii Remote, and that's fine. It's That's not really exciting to me, but maybe we'll wait and see uh, what, what they're going to do with it. You know, besides milking cows, because yeah, that's a thing, apparently. So let's get to the real important things about the the Switch, which is the games coming out for it. So first up, we have Zelda Breath of the Wild. Now this is probably the Switch game that most people have been talking about. The world and the enemies and everything in the game looks pretty cool so far to me from what I've seen from the trailers. I was never really huge on open world games. I tend to prefer like more linear ones. Challenging but linear. But I can appreciate it and the, the environment looks really nice. It looks gorgeous. Uh, visually I think it looks a lot better than Skyward Sword. Not just graphically like I'm not one of those people who who hate on cartoony graphics. Like I thought Wind Waker looked great, but I, I just felt that Skyward Sword had this indecisiveness on what it wanted its visual style to be, and it just didn't like it just didn't pop out. It didn't stand out for me. And like I'm not saying it was ugly, but I I think of like Wind Waker and Twilight Princess, and they both had this visual aspect to it that just really it just really stood out and it looked nice. And I think because they focused on this specific style, it just looked a lot better because of it. Skyward Sword just felt like it wasn't sure what it was trying to be, at least in my opinion. Uh, but yeah, for the new Zelda game. So apparently there's going to be dialogue in this game, like it, it, somewhat extensively based on the trailer. Now this might be controversial because Zelda games are known for being like almost entirely through text besides like a, a few shouts here and there, like Sha, like, you know, Link 
or whatever. And you even have Zelda talking in the trailer. So I'm, I'm interested to see how people are going to react to that. Personally, I think it's pretty good. The text in the previous games was fine. I think it worked. I, I liked it. But the idea of cutscenes with dialogue in a Zelda game is, is pretty cool. Honestly, I hope this game has a lot of cutscenes. I think it could really add to the game. And I'm interested in what other people have to say about this because I know a lot of people who are probably going to be Zelda traditionalists and like, oh, well, all the Zelda games are text. You know, you can't just start having people talk. I think as long as Link doesn't really talk, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. I think everyone else can talk except Link. And that's just, that's it. Uh, overall, it looks pretty good. I probably won't have a chance to play it until like way after it's been released. You know, if I do ever end up getting a Switch. But as of now, it's, it's looking pretty good. All right, next, there's a uh, Super Mario Odyssey. And now this is the game that I'm probably the most excited about. I, I'm a big 3D platforming Mario fan. Mario 64, Sunshine, Galaxy. I, I loved all of those games. And, and it, it was funny too, because after Galaxy, I was, I was always wondering, like, what are they going to do next? We're going to have like Mario jumping through dimensions or something? And somehow they managed to surprise me with Odyssey. I didn't even think about a new Mario game and bam, the trailer just comes out. And yeah, the, the visual of Mario jumping through a busy city is really cool. Like, I, I'm wondering, is this supposed to be New York? Since Mario is like supposedly from Brooklyn, unless that's like been retconned. Is the Mushroom Kingdom like in New Jersey or something? Uh, Yeah, the wall jumping between the buildings and all that and him just leaping off of the top of them. Like, it looks really fun. And on top of that, they have all these other great looking levels, including like jungle with really, really nice visually looking graphics and like a desert you got like mario riding on a sphinx which makes me think of i think it might be a callback to mario land on the game boy because there's like the sphinxes and the deserty level it could just be a coincidence but that's what it made me think of oh uh, yeah, yeah mario's got got his hat that's like a weapon but it's also like a character maybe because it has eyeballs some people were making fun of that but i i don't know i don't know anything about this hat yet so well, I guess we'll have to wait and see. Uh, I didn't hear it talking or anything. It doesn't have a mouth. So I think it might just be like a... I mean, there's tons of things with eyeballs in Mario games. You got mushrooms. You got clouds. It's it's probably just an object that's living. I don't know. That, that, that doesn't really matter. Oh, yeah. I didn't notice this at first, but the detail in Mario's hair and his mustache is amazing. Each individual hair on his mustache is like... Ugh, like re rewatch the trailer, like at the end when it's, it's close on uh, when it's close on Mario's face, and you could see like the individual hairs. It's it's crazy. It's really cool, and I love this because it, it's still keeping this cartoony Mario style, but we're getting all this detail added at the same time. Like even his shirt and his overalls like has has this uh, nice texture, and I think it blends together perfectly. It looks really good. Uh, there's not too much else I have to say about it. I'm I'm looking forward to it. I don't think I'll be getting a Switch anytime soon, but this is a game I'd really like to try out sometime. So yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Okay, those are like the two big ones, at least at least to me. I know there's like Fire Emblem and other stuff, but I, I'm not super interested in that. And I just, I don't know. I haven't really been hearing, hearing about it as much. Um, there's some other games that I'm just going to go over real, real briefly that sort of stuck out. Uh, first up is Arms, which visually it, it doesn't look too amazing but it looks like it could be pretty fun i like that there seems to be a variety of characters i love characters in any kind of like game where you're battling people i love the option to, to choose between different types of characters that's partly why i like fighting games so much which i guess this technically would be a fighting game wouldn't it just a very different one but yeah it, it looks simple but the gameplay looks like it could be pretty fun to play with your friends i don't think this is a title that i would spend full price on assuming that it's 50 60 dollars or whatever is considered full price now and you know like like i said before i don't even like spending full price on really great games honestly for me this would probably be like a 20 30 dollar game at the most like unless there's like some kind of story mode or something deeper about it that i haven't seen yet i, I just can't see myself spending a lot on this but it does look fun uh next up we have a no more heroes game this isn't a port but it's a, a new one by suda 51 who is the you know the Suda51 is one of my favorite game developers. Uh, he did Killer7 for the GameCube, later ported to PS2, which is just one of my favorite games of all time. Possibly my favorite. Ugh, I, can't, I can't even really 
go into it right now because I could just rant on about that. But if you haven't played Killer7, I definitely recommend it. It's really different. It's kind of hard to get into, but once you do, it's it's good. Um, no more heroes. I, I played one and two for the Wii, and it was it was a pretty good game. There there was some repetitiveness with the gameplay, but the bosses and the story is is that's the best part. Suda51 is really good at making characters. And that's definitely the best part of No More Heroes. And while it's not like a perfect game, it's still really, really cool because of the characters. Now that being said, I do really wish that this was a new Suda51 title instead of another No More Heroes game. But, you know, I, I guess I'll take what I can get. He, he He's done one other like really new game. Okay, so let me just like say this though. A lot of people think that Lollipop Chainsaw is a Suda51 game. And it technically kind of is because he had involvement in it, but it wasn't really like his baby. So like like Killer7 was like written, directed, you know, everything by him. Uh, no More Heroes written, directed, everything by him. Lollipop Chainsaw, I think he's listed as like producer or something, you know. Like I'm sure he had some influence on it, but it wasn't his baby. So it always bugged me when people called that like, oh, the new Suda51 game. He did make... Uh, Killer is Dead, which I played for the PS3, and man, it's it's a, it's a decent game. Like I said before, the characters is usually the best part, and it's it's kind of weird because Killer is Dead technically has better gameplay than No More Heroes, in my opinion, but the characters aren't as cool. And believe it or not, that ranks it lower for me than No More Heroes just because of that. Even though it plays better, just because the characters aren't as good, it makes the game not as good. And it's just because that's how Suda51 games are for me. You know, it's the story and the characters are a big part of it. The gameplay is definitely important, but when it comes to Suda51, characters. Uh, but yeah, I'm, this is a game that I'm, I'm keeping my eye on. I'm not like super hyped, but it's still cool to see that, it, that this is something coming to the Switch. You know, that Suda51's interested enough in it that he's doing a game for it. Uh, let's see, there's also a new Sonic game. <laughs> Um, I'm not really sure what to say about this. You know, when it comes to the Sonic series, it's 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 basically like a mixed bag. It's kind of like like a bag of trail mix, but somebody ate all the good stuff. So they they just keep digging and trying to pull out another good piece, but they just keep getting like dried raisins or something. I don't know what I'm saying. Sorry, sorry to people who like raisins. I'm just I'm just you you get what I'm saying. There's a new Sonic game. Uh, there's also oh. <laughs> Ultra Street Fighter 2. Yeah. Okay, just for the record, I love Street Fighter. It's, it's one of my favorite series. And I really like Street Fighter 2. But this totally just feels like a cash grab for Capcom. Like, I, I'm not really enticed by this at all. They just they added, like, two more characters. And it's just variations of Ryu and Ken who are already so similar to each other. It's just, yeah. I am I am not interested. Sorry. Um, besides that, there just seems to be like a lot of ports. You have like Mario Kart 8 and Minecraft and Shovel Knight. A lot of stuff with little or no differences from previous versions. And it seems to be most of the Switch library right now, unfortunately. But, you know, what, what can you say? Uh, one, one sort of interesting addition is Skyrim. I don't know, just the fact that there's an Elder Scrolls game on an, a Nintendo console... Is, is pretty cool but besides that all the the ports are like eh I don't I don't really care so overall am I looking forward to the switch well the switch itself I'm still waiting to see if it really you know breaks out and becomes this great console that isn't just relying on gimmicks uh, when it comes to games there there's a few that I'm looking forward to Mario Odyssey of course uh, the new Zelda the new no more heroes game but I'm still not sure about actually purchasing the system. $300 is a lot to spend on a one game related thing. I mean, for me. So, I don't know. Might have to wait a while until I, you know, think, okay, is this something that's worth purchasing? All right, where are we at here? Uh, uh, yeah, you could tell this is my first podcast, right? Mm -hmm. Little unorganized. All right, uh, let's see maybe some updates for me. All right, so I'm at the early stages of a new J reviews right now. You should be getting before the end of the month. Uh, I'm also looking at doing another short review. I don't know if you remember what that is. I did a couple of those a while back, and I think they turned out pretty decent. 
Um, I'm also considering starting to do short movie reviews. Nothing too elaborate like the main stuff, but just me talking over images of whatever movie it is, you know, probably just like a few minutes, um, just saying what I thought about it. Uh, let me know if you're interested in that, because I'll probably try it out eventually, but if enough people actually want it, then it might become like a more regular thing. Uh, oh, I should probably also mention that I just started a Patreon. I don't really like shilling. Um, you know, I, I don't even like to put subscribe to my channel at the end of my videos because it's just weird to me. Because it's like, if you wanted to subscribe, you'd probably do it anyway. And I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. But uh, yeah, I'm just letting you guys know that I started this thing as a way to try to help expand my channel. Uh, if you want to look more into it, the page has a more detailed description of what it's all about. I'll have a link to the page in the description below. And yeah. If you're interested, that's a thing. All right, I'll tell you what. So if this becomes a thing, I'll probably have a Q&A section at the ends of these podcasts. Right now, I obviously don't have any questions since this is the first episode. So I'm going to cheat and take a question from a comment on one of my older videos. And I'm just going to answer that. So let's see. Okay, <clears throat> so GF the player asks, will you review Splatterhouse 3? Now, that's a good question. They're referring, of course, to the fact that I've reviewed Splatterhouse 1 and 2, but there's a third game that I haven't done yet, so am I going to review it? Well, if you've noticed, I've uploaded a review on Halloween every year since I first started back in 2013. So that's four years in a row, just straight Halloween reviews. Uh, if you notice, there's a bit of a pattern with the games I reviewed. So if you could figure that pattern out, you should be able to find out if and when I'm going to review a Splatterhouse 3. It's it's not really complicated. I mean, you, you'll just look and be like, oh, okay, I get it. Just a little thing I thought I'd point out. So yeah, good question. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you have any suggestions, go ahead and let me know, whether it's about this podcast or the reviews or any of the ideas that I mention. Let me know what you think. Oh, and uh, if you want your question featured on my next podcast, uh, assuming that I continue making these, go ahead and leave your questions in the comments section of this video, and you'll probably see them in the next episode. So thanks a lot for sticking with me, guys. I hope this wasn't too boring. Maybe, you know, it, it, it caught your interest a bit. Uh, there's more videos coming in the near future. Catch you later.